Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by. So, Matt Walsh had his Twitter account hacked the other day, and actually a little bit more than that. If you didn't see those posts, one of them was a picture of someone's cell phone that had a whole bunch of two-factor authentication notes coming back to it. One was from Google, Microsoft, the Twitter one, and then a text from somebody that says, your account has been hacked. Now, when I saw that, it made me think of what happened was a SIM swap. And if you don't know what that is, basically, someone can pretend to be you and call your cell phone provider, say that they're swapping to a new phone and they have a SIM card to reactivate. And if you don't have any extra barriers of security, this happens fairly often. This is a really common form of fraud that happens. So. A good way to defend yourself from that is with a two-factor authentication device instead of using your phone. Now, I get that the phones are really convenient for that, but these sort of things can happen if that's your only layer of defense. With Twitter, this is an even bigger problem because the only way you can get two-factor authentication on that site now is by paying for Twitter Blue, which I think that's crazy that you would make me pay $8 for basic security features, but you can still use a two-factor authentication device instead of using your phone for that, edit, you know, that extra layer, which, again, I get it's convenient, but for that layer of security to make sure this sort of thing doesn't happen to you, I would recommend you purchase a, a separate device for this sort of thing. Now, as far as Matt Walsh specifically in his case, this might be a little deeper than just a SIM swap because... Allegedly, there was an insider that leaked this information out to the person who was, you know, got into the accounts and did all this stuff. But no real confirmations or anything like that about it. And the more I look at it, like if you just look at this on paper as what happened, you know, someone's device was stolen, hacked into people think data was taken out, and then people are trying to get this data published. This sounds just like the Hunter Biden laptop story. You know, the only difference, of course, you know, Matt Walsh is just a journalist for the Daily Wire, and Hunter Biden is a politician's son. But at the end of the day, you had your device hacked, people took data from it, and wanted to put it online. You know, Matt Walsh himself said days before the 2020 election that, you know, if you say this is just the tip of the iceberg regarding Hunter Biden's laptop, that you need to release the whole thing, the whole iceberg, so people know which way to vote. The only difference between what Matt Walsh said there and what this Wired employee who wrote some article got his account suspended is that Matt Walsh said he didn't say he would pay somebody for their work, which honestly is like, the most conservative thing I've heard from that guy recently is get free labor out of anybody as much as you can. Don't compensate people fairly for their work. Good on you for upholding your morals with that one. Now, you know, in more Matt Walsh news, YouTube demonetized him. So he says he's not going to upload his content there anymore, that he's going to move it to Daily Wire Plus and to Twitter, which, I mean, if you like his content, I'm assuming you already have a Daily Wire Plus subscription. They say it's going to be free over there. I don't really know all about that. I don't go on that website. So, you know, take it as you will. Um, I don't think he'll get his monetization back on YouTube. Maybe, but, you know, YouTube seems like they're pushing in a more progressive lean, especially with their biggest uploader, Mr. Beast, and his, you know, stuff with his, you know, compatriot Chris. So... You know, we'll see what happens with all that, but I guess until the next time a Daily Wire host says something egregious online, y'all try to have a good day.